We all know that water is essential to our day-to-day -day lives here in Cape Breton. Water moves through the water cycle, around the world, and back here again. But what happens to the water as we use it? Where does it go when it leaves your home, your school, your streets? And why should you care? This is the solution to water pollution. We're talking all about wastewater and bringing the issue home. My name is Avery and today we'll see what happens to the things that we don't see and don't talk about. We'll get the dirt on the situation. For starters, what is wastewater? Well, Superman was once known as Clark Kent. Pluto was once known as the planet. Wastewater was once known as sewage. But wastewater is more than what goes down your toilet. Wastewater is any water that's been affected by us, humans. Wastewater includes used water from your taps, your sinks, your toilets, showers, and your washing machines. And it also includes rainwater and melted snow that runs off into the storm drains. Wastewater is about 99% water and 1% waste stuff. Water is a huge part of life here in Cape Breton. That's why we have to treat it right. To show you how to treat it right here in the CBRM, let's go to the field with Bria. Hello Avery, today we're here at the shores of the Sydney Harbour. You're exactly right about water being important. We're an island with a gigantic lake in the middle. Water is everywhere and everyone makes wastewater every day. Whether you think of it or not, you're making wastewater that is going into our environment. The Sydney Harbour, the Bredor Lakes, and in the end, the Atlantic Ocean. All the water used in your home eventually becomes wastewater. Unfortunately, it doesn't always leave the same way it arrived. Before going down the drain, water is often contaminated with other substances. Some of these are okay, like soapy water, shampoo, and eco-friendly detergents. However, many things are sent down the drain that shouldn't be. Things like food scraps, baking grease, oil, butter, garbage, rags, paper towel, diapers, feminine hygiene products. Even dental floss should never be sent down the drain. To learn more about what happens at the end of the drain, we're going to explore the CBRM Battery Point Wastewater Treatment Plant. If you flushed a toilet in Sydney, you've sent wastewater to this treatment plant. Your wastewater is treated well here. To get it back into the harbor in tip-top shape, the Battery Point Water Treatment Plant uses chemically enhanced primary treatment processes. Matt Viva, wastewater supervisor, will explain what goes on behind these walls, so follow me. So Matt here is a CBRM wastewater supervisor, and he's going to talk to us a little bit about the headworks room and how the process is in there. Thanks, Maria. So this is the headworks room. All the water, sorry, all the wastewater from the Sydney area comes to this room. Mm -hmm. All of the large debris, such as garbage and rags, is chewed up and screened out. Before, go, before the wastewater goes into the next stage of the process. Um, as you can see here, uh, a chemical is being added. It's called alum. Okay. Alum basically makes all the floating particles stick together. We call it pin flock. Okay. So the pin flock is transferred to the next stage of the process, which we'll talk about a little later. But also in this tank, um, the injected air makes all of the sand and uh, heavy particles sink to the bottom. Uh, we call it grit. And all the sand and grit from this tank is uh, transferred to another part of the process and later sent to the landfill. Okay. So that's about it for this stage. We'll head off to the clarifier. So Bria, the water that comes from the headworks room that we spoke about earlier flows into these two big tanks where a second chemical is added called polymer. The pin flock then increase in size. The polymer makes it stick together and become uh, bigger and heavier. So in these clarifier tanks behind us here, um, the large particles sink to the bottom where a sludge blanket is created and then that is actually scraped off and stored at our sludge tank in another section of the building. Also what happens in here, any floating particles uh, um, like grease and stuff end up in these two tanks where it is also scraped off, we call it scum, and that is also transferred to our sludge holding tank. So when the water leaves this part of the facility, it goes into the UV disinfection room over here. So Bria, after a large percentage of the solids have been removed from the wastewater, the clearer water comes into this channel. Um, there's still uh, bacteria and stuff in the water, so that has to be killed before it goes to the Sydney Harbor. 
So that happens when the water passes over these uh, ultraviolet lights. Oh, really? The solids and stuff we spoke about earlier that were stored in the sludge holding tank actually get dewatered and sent to the landfill. So I can go show you that part of the process as well. Same thing. So at this treatment plant, what kind of things can't be treated? Well, the plant is designed to remove uh, organic material, um, kill bacteria before it goes to the Sydney Harbor. Uh, what it can't do is treat for hydrocarbons such as motor oil, it can't separate it. Uh, harsh cleaning chemicals are also uh, hard on the process. Mm -hmm. um, another huge issue in the CBRM is fats, oils and grease, uh, fog is what we like to call it. Uh, basically what it does, it plugs up pipes and stops water from getting to the plant and causes all kinds of headaches within the plant. So Brie, all the solids we spoke about earlier that are collected in the treatment plant here are actually, the water is squeezed out of the solids and the remaining solids end up in this bin here which is later trucked to the landfill. It happens pretty much once a day. Okay, wow. Well, that's really interesting. Thanks for the tour, Matt. No problem. I'd really like to learn a lot more about the Dominion Bridgeport wastewater treatment plant. Sure, let's head out. Okay. Thanks, Bria. No one can ever say you have a crappy job. But for real, not only does fog gunk up our pipes and our wastewater treatment plants, it's also bad for the environment. If all these little bits of fat and food get into the harbor, it can feed the smallest organisms, such as plankton. With a burst of food, there's a boost in activity. This is called eutrophication. All this activity uses up the oxygen in the water, and the other sea creatures need oxygen to live too. This makes their watery home less comfortable. For your pipes, our wastewater treatment plants, and our environment, put fog, fat oils and grease into the green bin. Remember, you are part of the solution to water pollution. Do your part, it's a no-drainer.